Uh, hi there, I'm just <clears throat> accepting a few messages I've got there. <laughs> ah, good morning, everybody. It is the very lovely Headley Rees. Headley has joined us several times before, but Headley is involved in a very, very current and interesting news story. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, Headley, come on. And of course, <laughs> he was brilliant and said, yeah, absolutely. Headley, what is this letter of intent that's gone out? Okay, well, it's called a letter before action to the chair of the MHRA. Basically, it's sponsored by Dr. Sam White, <clears throat> who, um, who most people will know, and two other people who've been really disadvantaged because their careers are threatened by um, the, the, the vaccine mandate. So the letter basically gives a whole load of information about obviously the side effects, what's going on with the vaccines, but has an awful lot of statements. Even Matt Letizia has given a statement. Yeah. And um, it's calling for the MHRA, if they don't respond to the letter within seven days, to, um, to raise an injunction so that uh, uh, the court would stop all vaccinations until there's been a proper investigation into all the evidence that we will provide. The evidence that I be, will be providing is on this, the end-to-end -end supply chain. Now, these vaccines are what are called advanced therapy medicinal products, ATMPs. They've been around for um, a long time. They're basically cell therapies or gene therapies. Um, they're very, very difficult to make. Um, my case has been around all those difficulties and basically how could you develop a vaccine you know, full supply chain in less than 12 months. Yes, exactly. I'm just looking looking at the letter before claim now. So I think it's 18 pages long. It is substantial, substantial evidence that you've got in there. And, uh, and I noted that uh, PJH uh, lawyers, who are obviously the legal firm behind it, they said that, in fact, they tweeted saying big thank you to those involved in assisting with the letter to MHRA, including witnesses and brilliant team of freedom fighters working tirelessly behind the scenes at Headley Rees made an immense contribution, honoured to be involved. So yeah. talk, tell us a bit more. Well, I, I'm honoured to be involved with this as well. Philip Highland is, uh, like yourself, a force of nature. He's working tirelessly contacting people, people to provide evidence and there's a team of people working on this a day, day and night, um, very committed. If I believe today, Philip will be in the police station somewhere in London, handing over the file with all the evidence. Um, and I don't know exactly what he's gonna say, but um, I know it will be impactful. Um, obviously getting coverage of this is quite difficult. So, yes. um, you know, we, we, we hope we can get impact and we just hope that the courts will basically understand exactly the risks that we're facing now and will take action. Yeah, exactly. And uh, just to give people an idea that the legal basis for, for this request is that the Chief Executive Officer, June Rain, holds public office. She uh, ha, um, commands a substantial salary of £250,000 per annum. Uh, the public office she holds requires the MHRA. The MHRA, obviously, is the body which licenses medicines uh, to intervene where... Oh, you're going to say something there, Headley? Yeah, well, uh, since 1995, the MHRA has never licensed a product. It's all been done through the European Medicines Agency. Um, so, and they were headquartered in London, at Canary Wharf, until, um, until 2019. So all the licenses for the, that many years have been done in the European Medicines Agency. So the MHRA isn't, oh. doesn't have the skill sets or any ability to be able to license products. So part of the case is the fact that how can they conditionally approve medicines when none of the inspection of facilities, none of the legal obligations to good manufacturing uh, and distribution practice has been undertaken, you know, they're not physically capable of, of, of doing it. I've had a look at the organization there's one person there responsible for everything, you know, licensing, inspections, and the rest seem to be, I, I'm not quite sure what they're doing. So it's a bit out in space. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We do know, as they're pointing out in the comments, of course, that MHRA is Bill Gates' stomping ground. Certainly the Gates Foundation have uh, contributed to the MHRA, which is astonishing to me because that is 
that is a public body, right? It's supposed to be a public body, not a private concern. But this this letter is, uh, you know, is it available online for people to read it? Oh, yes, yeah, it's, it's available on Twitter. I think it's on the PDH Law website. Right. Um, I can send uh, you. It's, it's, a, it's a link to a PDF and anyone can see it. Yeah. Th then let's put that link in the description, Headley. Will you keep us updated? Because it's so important. This is about a gross misconduct, as you say, that that uh, June Rain may be liable for corporate manslaughter. So this is putting MHRA and June Rain in particular on notice, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Listen, thank you so much for joining us to explain that. I know it's a short period of time, but I really do greatly appreciate you as ever. Everybody's saying hello to you in the comments. Have a brilliant Christmas, Headley. We'll see you in the new year. OK, thanks, Sonia. You take care. Take good care of yourself. Cheers. Bye, bye, bye. Thanks, Headley.